football players may be going to trial after an, an attempted robbery at the Delta Sigma Phi fraternity house. Safer has new confidentiality policies. And freshmen can expect some big changes this quarter. Find out what's new in campus dining. Thank you for joining us for our weekly broadcast. I'm Ben King. And I'm Buki Babalola. This is Mustang News. Five Cal Poly football players are awaiting their second arraignment after pleading not guilty to all charges. Cameron Atkins, Cortland Fort, Kristen Ivory, Jake Brito, and Dominic Love were arrested in connection with an attempted robbery at the Delta Sigma Phi fraternity house on August 10th. A search warrant later served at the fraternity house resulted in the arrest of Gear McMillan on charges of possessing marijuana for sales and the possession of a controlled substance. McMillan is due in court on October 21st to enter a plea. Last week, ASI launched a four-part video campaign encouraging students to register to vote. ASI paired up with TurboVote, a nonprofit that sets up websites for universities where students can register to vote anywhere, anytime, with any online advice. The first video features ASI President Joy Sullivan rapping to the tune of Fancy by Iggy Azalea. The videos will continue to be sent out via email and shown on campus TV. The decision surrounding Greek party registration policy and guidelines has finally been made. These policies aim to provide the safest possible social environment for the members of the Greek community. The 15-article document outlines regulations dictating when a party may be hosted, registration process, and even guest list guidelines. A full overview of this document is available on deanofstudents.calpoly.edu. A Cal Poly club may be banned from campus because they refuse to sign an anti-discrimination policy. All clubs at CSU campuses are required to allow enrolled students to participate in club membership and leadership positions. According to the CSU Executive Order 1068, InterVarsity San Luis Obispo, part of a nationwide Christian campus ministry, did not sign the Executive Order banning discrimination. InterVarsity says they welcome anyone to become a member, however, the club is opposed to anyone, allowing anyone that doesn't practice Christianity to have a leadership role. If we're going to ask someone to lead a Bible study, we want them to actually believe what they're reading. Um, for us to have integrity, to call students to faith, we think we should be able to allow leaders to believe in the very thing that they're preaching. After connecting with the chancellor, InterVarsity was not allowed to was allowed to not abide to the executive order for one year. They will be meeting with the CSU chancellor next week to negotiate what the club's status on campus will be in the future. Safer has some new confidentiality changes coming this year. In previous years, the on-campus organization, which provides an outlet for students who have been sexually assaulted, was required to report all incidents to Jean DaCosta, who would then reach out to the student affected and offer support. Now, Safer does not have to report any cases to the school, which provides a complete confidential system. We don't report to anybody. It's completely confidential. So if the student just doesn't want anything, any emails, anybody else knowing but the student as well as the counselor, then it's a great resource. Safer hopes students understand when they report to Safer, they are reporting, they are not reporting to the school. A new term is being used to describe a potentially dangerous time for stu college students. The red zone is the period from college uh, move-in dates to Thanksgiving break when new students are at a higher risk of being sexually assaulted. Chief of Police Chris Staley says there are ways to stay safe. I think just being very cautious who you actually, you know, decide you're going to spend time with or go home with, and you know, make sure that people know where you're at and you know that there's a way of getting out of there. Women are at highest the highest risk, and typically large amounts of alcohol are involved. The Obama administration released a list of 55 universities under investigation for their handling of sexual assault cases. California legislator, legislature has passed Bill 967, which prohibits universities from receiving federal funding unless they comply with new policies and procedures for sexual assault complaints. Colleges also must implement prevention and outreach programs for sexual violence, domestic violence, dating violence, and stalking. Supporters hope the bill will reduce sexual assaults and encourage those affected to seek help. The bill awaits Governor Jerry Brown's approval. 
Freshmen can expect some big changes this quarter in their campus dining experiences. These changes include new promotions, more nutritional options, and even a new made-to-order salad restaurant called Red Radish. All dining complexes will have a nutritional calculator for their food they are serving. For more information, check out the campus dining website. Low water pressure is on the rise at Cal Poly. Cal Poly has attached low flow aerators to faucets around campus. The faucet modifications can be found in public restrooms throughout the school, as well as in dorm restrooms and shower heads. This is an attempt to save water due to California's drought. Water usage at Cal Poly is required to be reduced by 10% in 2016. Cal Poly is also looking at converting lawns into low water use or zero water use areas. The men's soccer team is looking to rebound after seeing their six-game unbeaten streak end last weekend at the hands of Pacific. Currently 5-2 and 1 overall, the Mustangs are hosting Drake this Friday at Alex G. Spano Stadium. A bright spot for Cal Poly so far has been the play of goalkeeper Wade Hamilton. Hamilton, last week's NSCAA National Player of the Week, leads the Big West with three shutouts and 37 saves. Hamilton is expected to be a factor for the Mustangs when they kick off versus Drake at 8 p.m. on Friday. Again, look for your post-game recap on mustangnews.net. Now we turn to Cal Poly football, who will be traveling on the road this weekend to Northern Arizona. After picking up their first win of the season last Saturday versus Portland State, the Mustangs will look to open up Big Sky Conference play with a road win in Flagstaff versus the Lumberjacks. The last meeting between the schools resulted in a 17-13 defeat at Alex G. Spano Stadium, helping the Lumberjacks on their way to a 7-1 finish in the Big Sky. Looking for the, look for the Mustangs to continue to enforce their running game after racking up more than 470, 470 yards last week versus Portland State. The matchup is set for, for 4 or 5 p.m. Head to mustangnews.net for your post-game reviews. On Wednesday evening, spectators at Vino Robles Amphitheater in Paso Robles had the unique opportunity to experience the electrifying sounds of the mimicking birds with headliners Modest Mouse. First up to perform were Portland natives, the mimicking birds, who revved up the crowd with their trendy haircuts, desert folk dreamscape feel, and eight-song set. Then it was Modest Mouse's turn. The band does not often tour, so this performance was especially populated with fans. Modest Mouse played for over two hours and included both new and old material. They played 18 songs before coming back for an unbelievable six-song encore and an energetic crowd. We're leaving you now with a song from Second Cousins, who performed in the University Union this past Sunday. Thank you for joining us for our weekly broadcast. I'm Ben King. And I'm Buki Bavalola. Have a great day, Cal Poly. Mm -hmm.